friends, I'm out here just harvesting a few limelight hydrangeas for the market this week. I talked about it in a bouquet making video earlier this week. However, it was like 32 minutes into the video. So I thought I'd, I'd do a video of just showing you guys how I use Quick Dip, which is something that was recommended to me to, from my friend Tabitha from the Hulu Flower Farm in Little Falls. I said, Tab, how? Because she has a huge hydrangea field like I do. Like, check that out. Oh, oh yeah, I love that. Anyway, I said, Tab, I'm terrified of sending out my hydrangeas and having them wilt in my bouquets. And she said, gotta use Quick Dip. So I use Quick Dip and they're lasting several, several days. Very happy. So here is my limelight hydrangea field along with the Solidago, guys. The Solidago, everyone like plants and buys seed for. It's a weed here. So it's just growing everywhere. And honestly, I can't keep up with it, so I don't. This is 180 limelight hydrangeas. I got the Invincible Rubies down here. Uh, mostly cutting off the white ones. So these are two years old. I bought them from Proven Winners and I bought them as QT sizes and they were, they were tiny. I have video planting them. They were teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny. And I actually did not trim them at all this year. They're looking fantastic. Oh, perfection. I'm going to cut this one and that one and that one. <laughs> All right, before I do any quick dip on the hydrangeas, I'm gonna just grab a couple other things. I'm gonna grab as many zinnias as I can right now. Uh, there's just probably maybe 30 or 40 zinnias that I'm gonna grab. I do have some dahlias over there, some snapdragons that I'm gonna harvest uh, because I was gonna wait for the morning. Zinnias I'd like to do the day before, but dahlias and snapdragons can be cut day of, but I don't wanna wait because it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut what I can. I don't have a tripod or anything, so I can't set this up. Let me see if I can figure something out, but I wanna show you the dahlias. Here's some more zins. Oh, it's so cute. These are all the hydrangeas I got, by the way. I don't think it's gonna be a crazy market day. So the dahlias are over here, and the hill crest are just amazing. I have to show you guys. And my sunflowers are finally blooming. So here is the basically the dahlia patch. It is two... 100 foot rows and then there's another like 15 foot section in another row but the the hill crest suffusion are so wait this one's linda's baby this is hill crest yes oh so pretty i mean i might as well go ahead and grab these while i'm out here oh See, I'll, I'll harvest this. I will. A lot of people will wait. Look, I got, that's Japanese beetle damage. They are finding them. I'm just ignoring, I'm letting them harvest and feast on those ones. They're not touching these ones. So I'm gonna let them destroy the apricot star. That's apricot star. Let them destroy that. As long as they don't touch my babies, we're good. Okay. But I, oh shoot, she dropped. I've got a combination of Linda's Baby and Hillcrest. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a bucket because I can't hold any more in my hand. And then I'm going to go down there and get some more, maybe some Arabian Nights and some Rycroft Jan down there. I can see them popping. Okay, we got some Michaela Miranda, another Linda's Baby, and then this is Gertie Hoke, H-O-E-K. Uh, gorgeous. A lot of them are a little buggy but I got a lot of buds coming. I'm gonna have to get out here and do something about these Japanese beetles. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. Just a really lovely coloring, but lots of buds on this one. Let's see, moving on down the line, we've got another Gertie. I might, that one's got some bug damage underneath. I'm gonna let that one go. And then this crop right here, the reds and the purples, these were given to me by a customer who came into the nursery and said that they have an overabundance of purple and red and they wanted me to have them and honestly the purple I I don't want to use because they're not holding up well in bouquets however they are gorgeous for the landscape this red though that is really beautiful so I'm going to cut some of those and use some of those they're a little bit nicer in the bouquet and then down here I have I don't know who this is but she looks like a highlighter in this video, but she's really a nice lavender color. And over there, if my camera will focus, is Arabian Night and Rycroft Jaune. Now, if you watched my bouquet making video, you'll be familiar with Arabian Night. It's a gorgeous dark dahlia. 
I've got a ton of them here. And then this Rycroft, my camera is just not being focusy today, is a magical white. It is golden hour, guys. So the camera keeps fluctuating between <laughs> all of the things. If you see right here, I've got some sunflowers that are finally coming and I have some horrible news because look at my next succession. It has been eaten by deer and then my next one by deer. And then for some reason, the next two successions are fine. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a gap probably and then I'll have sunflowers again. But this, cry with me folks. These were all sunflower steves right here. I have a fence up, you can see it. It got through my seven foot tall fence it jumped over it actually and knocked part of it down and came in two or three nights in a row. I'm gonna go ahead, oof, look at that red. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these and put them in the bucket and then I gotta get those sunflowers. They're looking good. Okay, I've got a bucket of dahlias. Oh, quite a few Arabian nights. I cannot complain about this variety this year. Look at it, it's the perfect size. It's the perfect color. It goes with everything. It goes with literally everything. There's like the pink and burgundy. There's the peach and burgundy. There's the white and burgundy. This will go with, oh, hold on just a sec. Oh, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, we just love Arabian night. So good. It reminds me of the, the Cornell, the Cornell variety that I had a couple of years ago that it was, it was dark. It started with an M and I can't remember it, but anyway, yep. I'm a happy, happy farmer right now. All right, look at all this damage on the zinnias. Japanese beetle. Haven't sprayed, haven't done anything. I've got a lot of really cute, cute buds. So I'm gonna set this camera down and harvest as much as I can. These are Oklahoma pinks. I'm using my, one of my bouquet buckets as uh, a tripod. Hopefully that works for just a couple minutes just to get a little bit of fresh video for you guys. I know it's been few and far between here at farm. It's been a really busy year. A lot of these buds are damaged, but I can work my way around it. There's a lot of crows. Can you hear them? Lots of crows tonight. I'm exhausted. It is 7.22 p.m. the day before market. I have been going since 5.38 a.m. Oh, I'm tired. But it's going to rain in the morning, so harvesting in the morning is not going to be an option. Plus, zinnias, I like to sit overnight in case they get a kinky neck and I don't want them to flop in the vase so letting them sit overnight is much preferred. I strip everything in the field for my zins. I don't know if you guys can even hear me because I'm just using my phone out here but these are all very sturdy necks so I'm not worried about any of these I'm not even like doing a wiggle test because they're just so sturdy, I can tell without even touching them. I like to have everything as clean as possible. So when I'm at the market, I don't have to worry about taking off any dirty leaves or anything like that when I'm actually making the bouquets. That one's a darker color in comparison. I like it. A little bit of a, a darker Oklahoma pink. We've had a lot of rain this year and I really don't see any evidence of any fungal diseases on my zinnias. Just the Japanese beetle damage. Some Oklahoma pinks. I'm gonna see what else I can grab. I'll carry the bucket with me. We've got some orange ones here. You see the orange ones? Got some burgundy ones, some orange ones, some salmon ones. Perhaps if I move the vehicle, I've got my Kubota here. Put you back in the back seat. giant lilac I believe gorgeous 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 yeah let me tilt it up just a wee bit so I'm gonna go over to those I can't even point to them those those salmon ones I'm gonna cut that one though I am I am having a lot of bug damage which is unfortunate but I think I'll have enough to make it through market it's got where where's the thing See how much bug damage that has? 
Dad had it. barely moved from that spot and they're just so good I think that's enough of these I don't want to cut too many um, because I don't think it's gonna be a busy market tomorrow because of the woodsman's field days okay I'm gonna cut some more who am I kidding <laughs> they'll just grow more all right just cut some more and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this Oklahoma zinnia patch Guys, I planted some, a perennial spot right here. These are all foxgloves. The other end is echinacea. So we'll see how they come back. But a lot of little red Oklahoma zinnias in here that need to be cut. Look at that one. Oh my goodness. Will you look at those queen limes? Ugh. And then we got some more. All right, into the bucket. Look at Arabian Night and this queen. I mean, <laughs> Don't look at her leaves. Don't look at her legs. She's great. I still have all of these snapdragons to cut. I was gonna do it in the morning, but I still have the sunflowers to cut. Oh dear. All right, I'm gonna grab a bucket full of these and then um, the status will wait till tomorrow. The sunflowers can wait for tomorrow, but God forbid that deer eat them overnight. Oh, maybe I'll just do ageratum. I'll just do ageratum. The sunflowers can wait till tomorrow. Well, I just harvested these because I felt like it. <laughs> they're not very tall. I mean, they're tall enough for a bouquet, don't get me wrong. But they've been taller in years past, but I don't care. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that beats these colors in mid to late August and September. Ooh, putting them in the bucket. So there's basically the field at night. Uh, I have a few other things over on this other side, but it's... <laughs> The deer ate so much this year, it's insane. They they even ate this patch, which was my Sahara Rubecchia patch. Looks like they're still eating it. However, it's growing back. Real quick, when people ask me how I get like long stems of Rubecchia, I sacrifice the lower stems. You know, you could cut it right there, but no, I cut it all the way down there and I strip those side ones because that's the only way I'm gonna get a long stem especially in the early phases and especially when the deer chew them all up the first round. There's another example. I cut it there, sacrificing all those stems, but she needed to be in a bouquet and it needed to be today. Oh, I love them all. Oh, wow. If this bucket right here doesn't convince you to grow Sahara or any kind of Rebecca, along with hot biscuits, amaranth, and I think this is Hopi Red Dye. If this doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. That is fall in a bucket. Well, it's getting darker. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this edgeratum that's got a lot of grass growing up through it. But I have quite a few stems. They're gonna go perfect with the colors that I have this week. So I'm gonna cut these and call it a night. Here are all those sunnies. I planted mine really close together and they're really small and cute and perfect for bouquets. Okay, I've got the adoratum, I've got the hydrangeas, I'm gonna do a quick dip on those. I just grabbed a few snap, I gotta, I could fill two buckets with those snapdragons. I just cut just a few sunflowers and they're so perfect. I love them little like this. They just add so much to a bouquet. Got some snatus, the zinnias, the dahlias. Whew, and the Rebecca and the Amaranth. I have some Celosia that I could cut, but honestly, a lot of my members are skipping this week, so I have fewer bouquets to make because we're so busy in the village that nobody wants to come into town unless they're going to the Woodsman's. So, all right, guys. Good night, field. See you soon. Here's the quick dip that I use, and then I take a hydrangea. I literally just trim the bottom of it. Again, even if I've just trimmed it, and then I dip it in the quick dip and then put it right back into the flower food water. Do you like my socks? <laughs> Thank you.
you can reuse the quick dip for the day, but the company does recommend that you don't use it the next day and then you discard it because it can get bacteria. Oh, <laughs> before I was rudely interrupted, my <laughs> the company says to discard any unused of the quick dip because it can get bacteria in it and you don't want that bacteria going up into your stem. So you can use the same little amount for the whole day and then dump it and use fresh next time. Thanks guys for sticking around. I'm gonna get packed up and go to the market. It's the next day, obviously, outfit change. However, I won't be able to make a video of today's market, but hopefully my plan is next Friday to make a video of that market. It's a huge market. We're joining with the local PTA to do a food truck, food truck Friday, and we've got music playing, and it should be a great time. Nicole Pitt from Flower Hill Farm, signing off in front of the Limelight Hydrangea Field. Thanks for joining us. See you soon.